Hello, I'm Matt Bystrack, Superintendent of Schools for the West Seneca School District. It's Thursday, June 3rd, and uh, this is just my weekly update. Uh, so I just wanted to thank all of our stakeholders, everybody that filled out our surveys. We sent out a few surveys last week that just closed out earlier this week, if you'll recall. Uh, and really, the, the whole point of them is just to get some feedback uh, about the coming school year. Uh, which we are expecting and you know obviously hope that it starts off in a typical manner five days a week of in-person instruction for our students um, so the surveys we specifically generated them in a way that we were going to have some anecdotal data to be able to take a look at so some short answers and things like that so we're still going through them uh, to get some uh, some information from them but I can tell you that there are some definite themes that are emerging uh, and it's encouraging that there's common themes among all of our stakeholder surveys which is good to see so kind of the three big areas that seem to be of the big greatest uh, focus for people completing these surveys uh, involved academics, you know, concerned with students being able to be academically successful moving into next year, uh, social emotional concerns, just making sure even though that the survey bore out from our families saying that most kids are doing fine, you know, maybe a little bit of stress but doing okay for the most part, uh, they are concerned with maybe some adjustment issues moving into next year uh, and then kind of almost leading to that uh, engagement you know, uh, that people just, you know, making sure that, you know, they want to make sure that kids are engaged in the educational process next year and whatever, you know, resources and tools we have at our disposal, uh, we want to be able to take full advantage of. So um, I can tell you that uh, we've been, uh, you know, doing some planning kind of, you know, parallel along with this, but obviously taking in these sort of feedback with some other venues that we've utilized as well. And just a few things that, you know, just right off the top that we're going to be doing some steps that we'll be taking. Uh, you know, obviously we have some summer programming that we're going to be offering, you know, for all of our students, uh, at least all grade levels, I should say. Um, we're also taking a look at the way that we deliver uh, academic intervention services and trying to be uh, maybe a little creative with that as well, adding some additional resources, uh, maybe looking at like a learning lab model, things like that. Um, also a great deal of focus on literacy for the coming year. Uh, across all of our content areas. I can tell you if there's one one area that permeates all other areas, it's reading and literacy. And, you know, if you're not a good reader, uh, you know, you're going to struggle in just about every other content area. So uh, we're going to be adding some additional support there as well. We're going to take a look at class sizes, you know, specifically kind of at our elementary schools, uh, but also in some of our uh, classes that what we call our integrated classes with students that have uh, some special needs, just making sure that those sizes, maybe taking some steps to try to keep those si uh, classroom sizes at a decent level. Uh, also, uh, technology and uh, curricular support uh, were an area of focus uh, among our educators. They just said that in some cases they mean whether it's professional development or additional hands-on support, uh, that they felt that this would be a good focus. Uh, as you recall, we kind of lunged into the whole you know, era of one-to-one -one devices with our Chromebooks and our remote instruction. So uh, we need to catch up to that a little bit. And I think we did an outstanding job, but we just want to make sure that we continue to refine and uh, you know, sort of hone our practice. So uh, some of the other areas that we're looking at as well too, as I mentioned earlier, is social and emotional support. Adding some additional resources, some individuals to be able to uh, support our students' social and emotional needs, additional structures, um, more to come with that. Uh, and then again, professional development. I did mention that. That was another area that a lot of our folks, you know, all of our faculty and staff uh, and uh, on the surveys that came out loud and clear that people, you know, valued some of the professional development that we had this year and they want to see more of it uh, in certain areas like supporting the social emotional needs of students, as I mentioned, like technology uh, and you know, curricular software, things like that. So uh, we are going to be adding tangible support in, in all the areas I just mentioned there and more. Um, I do want to stress, and I know I mentioned this at our Board of Education meeting the other day, but I do want to stress uh, that you know this is not a complete process. This is going to be fluid. Uh, the federal government is supplying us some additional money to be able to address these things. It's temporary money, so we're being very strategic with, with its use. Uh, but you know this is a fluid process. So if you know based on feedback and based on data throughout the course of the coming year, if we need to make adjustments or reallocate resources, we'll have the ability to be able to do that. Um, so the one thing I just I wanted to address because I've gotten this question from a few folks is about remote learning. Will the district be offering remote learning next year? The long and the short of it is I don't know at this time. Uh, New York State really has to make that call. Uh, we obviously feel as though in-person instruction is the most optimal and ideal uh, modality for instruction. But that said, if we're required to offer a remote model of instruction, we're certainly going to comply with that requirement. Uh, there are any number of reasons why that might be a more beneficial uh, modality 
uh, for a student. It could be a medical reason, whatever it is. Uh, so we'll certainly comply. Uh, the vast, I will say the vast majority of, uh, only relatively small number of people were interested in the remote model moving into next year. And no one has committed to anything. We just wanted to do a little straw poll just to see, you know, what kind of numbers we might be looking at in the event that we do need to offer a remote model of instruction. So we're still waiting for New York State guidance on that and we will be sure to communicate as soon as it comes down. So anyway, that's all I have for this week. I look forward to checking in with everyone next week. Have a great weekend.